Most of the time, the Gulf of Mexico is a healthy ecosystem that endures in a delicate balance. Sometimes, conditions change and create an environment where little survives. One situation occurs every summer off the coast of Louisiana. It's known as the dead zone. The scientific term is a hypoxia zone, an area depleted of dissolved oxygen, which suffocates marine life. The hypoxic zone off the Mississippi can reach to about 7,000 square miles in size each year, and, and it can have a direct effect on, on Texas. But we also have hypoxic zones that have farmed off of Galveston, off of Corpus, and in different base systems uh, because of the same thing, and that is too many nutrients. These nutrients come from a variety of sources. One is fertilizer routinely applied to crops. When rain falls, excess fertilizer washes off the fields and drains into the surrounding watershed. Cities and towns contribute their share, especially from over-fertilized suburban lawns. As the river approaches the coast, it is charged with the combined nutrient load from all of the human activity upstream. Basically, it's like a garden hose. It just sprays those nutrients out right in the near shore waters. And when the conditions are right during the late summer, you get these tremendous algal blooms, and they begin the whole process of dying off, decomposing, and using up the oxygen and creating these hypoxic zones. Of course, these creatures can't really get away very easily. 41% of the continental United States eventually drains into the main body of the Mississippi River. 12 million people also live in urban areas throughout the drainage area. Most of this land is the heart of America's agriculture industry. Over the past 150 years, the channel of the Mississippi has been lined with levees to control flooding. These levees keep the water and the nutrients flowing straight to the Gulf. Each summer, the hypoxia zone off the Mississippi is bigger than the summer before. If that zone continues to expand as it seems to be doing, it doesn't expand like a balloon. It expands toward Texas. And so imagine, if you would, the entire upper Texas coast from Galveston to Sabine Pass having water with no oxygen in it for all the summer. That's a real possibility. That's why we all have a stake in what happens in this country, uh, in the Midwest and so forth, to try to deal with that nutrient over-enrichment. Sometimes it's not the lack of oxygen in the water that kills fish. Sometimes it's a certain kind of algae that is itself toxic. These are called harmful algal blooms, and the most common on the Gulf Coast is red tide. It's very common during a red tide to see dead fish littered all along the beaches, and they can stretch for miles and miles and miles. Red tides are typically going to occur during the late summer or the early fall, once the Gulf of Mexico has had all summer to get nice and warm. And typically, we will see blooms begin, give or take, around September. Red tide specifically is caused by a species of algae named Karenia brevis. And when these algae reproduce very, very quickly, they turn the water red or reddish brown. And so that's what we here on the Texas coast know as a red tide. Red tide is not a serious threat to most people, but can be irritating to the skin and lungs. If you're out on the beach, you might find yourself sneezing or coughing. The toxin can cause allergy-like symptoms. Some people can get a rash if you have sensitive skin and you swim in the water, others don't. If you're out on the beach and you are bothered by the symptoms that you're experiencing, they should subside fairly quickly once you leave the beach. One thing I would definitely caution against is do not, under any circumstances, let your pet eat the dead fish that are on the beaches. We do have evidence now that those fish remain toxic and can cause serious illness, if not death, to animals who consume them. When reports of a fish kill or algal bloom come in, the Kills and Spills team of Texas Parks and Wildlife investigates. 
the team collects water samples to determine if indeed a red tide bloom has occurred. The best place to find out the most current information is online. Texas Parks and Wildlife has a page on our website devoted to harmful algae. When we're having an active event, we try and update it every day as we can. At some locations across the coast, you may notice signs about fish consumption advisories. These are posted by the Department of State Health Services. In an advisory, it's up to the public to determine whether or not they wish to consume the fish. Our advice may give amount of consumption for certain species within a water body. For instance, you may run across a sign in Galveston Bay and it says there's a fish consumption advisory on this body of water. The advisory only applies to catfish and spotted sea trout. All the other fish are safe to eat, so it's our intention to give the public enough information so that they can choose whether or not they wish to eat fish from a given area where we found a potential problem with the seafood. It depends really upon the compound that we find, whether it's mercury or PCB. The developing fetus is the most sensitive in the population. Therefore, we have special advice in many cases to women who are pregnant or women who are even of childbearing age. And we give those in our fish consumption advisory. Monitoring overall water quality is the responsibility of the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. The TCUQ samples water in stations all over the state. We monitor lakes, streams, rivers, estuaries, and the streams that go into the estuaries. The TCEQ collects a lot of the samples ourselves, maybe a third, but the other two thirds are collected by Clean Rivers Partners, which would include river authorities and some cities, and they do a lot of monitoring on their own, and we're able through the Clean Rivers Program to bring all those data together so that we can get the most use out of sampling that was usually going on anyway. So that data is a big part of what we use for assessment. Right, you ready? Over 40 years of data collection offers a sober evaluation of water quality. Mm. We have trends in both directions, both good and bad. But overall, the trends have been pretty good in the last 30 years. For example, nutrients have gone down in a lot of local water bodies since the 70s. We've also seen that oxygen levels in the Houston Ship Channel have gone up dramatically in that same time period. But on the other hand, we've also seen some areas where bacteria levels have gone up over the last 30 years too, which is not what we want. With the population in Texas expected to double in the next 40 years, bacteria could be an ongoing problem. We think that the bacteria levels are going up in a lot of areas because we're increasing urbanization and we're creating more pavement and more runoff. So there's less filtering of the water into the ground. It's just running straight off and carrying all the pollutants with it. As our population grows, it becomes more important than ever that our bays receive freshwater inflows from rivers and streams to maintain the system's balance. Freshwater inflows are very important to the bays and estuaries. Freshwater is critical to maintain the proper salinity gradient in the bays. Freshwater brings in sediments and all those things are vital for the proper functioning of the whole bay ecosystem. Along the beach, especially during the summer, bacteria concentrations can be a concern. The General Land Office operates the Texas Beach Watch Program, which collects water samples at 167 locations. Bacteria counts are posted on their website. For a link, visit texasthestateofwater.org. Our use and enjoyment of the Gulf of Mexico has risks. Some we have created ourselves, and it's up to us to take responsibility for them. Problems are arising because of what we take out of the ocean, the Gulf of Mexico, and what we're putting into it. With every breath you take, every drop of water you drink, you're connected to the existence of the blue part of the planet. And the United States is blessed with this big blue chunk called the Gulf of Mexico that delivers so much to us that we have in the past thought of as free and infinite in its capacity to recover no matter what we did to it. But we're learning that unless we take care of our actions, 
we're going to lose some of those special values of such great importance to us. Understanding that this is a shared ocean and that we need to work together to understand it and to take care of it and to use it, but to use it in a responsible fashion. Use it, but don't use it up. <laughs>